Hello there YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. Now I wasn't going to do a video on this because I'm honestly kind of in a hurry to get this done because I want to get back to uh, working on the Peterbilt, get some more videos out on that. So I wasn't going to record this but then I remember back, oh just under two years ago probably now, when I did a video on replacing the radiator on this truck, I had made a statement about how I don't like aftermarket radiators. Now the new radiator is an aftermarket unit from Northern Radiator. Now I was pretty hesitant to go with an aftermarket radiator. I've had problems in the past with aftermarket radiators. Basically uh, they don't last. And then uh, if they fail within the warranty period, basically they don't cover them. What they do is they make you send it back to them before they agree to warranty anything, which means that unless you want to have your truck down for two weeks, you have to buy another one. Now after you've bought another one, put it in, gotten on the road, shipped it to them, you never hear from them again. They basically just blow you off and you don't see anything back ever. So I wanted to put a Mac radiator in it from the Mac dealership. I didn't care what it cost. They quoted me $1,700 for a Mac radiator and I would have paid it. The problem was is they didn't have one in stock anywhere in the country. It would have had to ship directly from the manufacturer and they basically told me I can order it for you. I have no idea when you're going to get it. Now I had several small issues installing this radiator. Nothing fit quite like it was supposed to. These mounting points where it goes into the frame were off just a little bit. You can see here that the, when this is just loose here, the inlet to the radiator wasn't exactly lined up. I mean everything was just close enough that you could get it together but it wasn't quite right. And what it ended up happening is I got a small stress crack right here on the radiator just kind of behind where this filler neck attaches into the top tank. So what I ended up doing, I know this isn't the prettiest repair in the world but generally what I would, how I would repair copper radiators just with a roll of solder. However, because this appeared to be a stress crack, I wanted something a little bit stronger, so I brazed it with some bare bronze rod and an oxyacetylene torch. And this isn't something I do every day, so it's not the prettiest job in the world, but this should be perfectly functional when I get it back together. We're pressure test it, and I'm confident it's going to be just fine. Now, this radiator is under two years old yet. And the radiator that I replaced when I put this one in was a factory radiator, and this truck was manufactured in 1999. So that radiator was 19 years old when I replaced it, and this one's under two years old. And that's why I, I've just never had good luck with aftermarket radiators. Now that this is brazed, I think what we should do is we should address the fact that this upper radiator tube does not line up to the outlet. I kind of hate to go cutting this apart and re-welding it to, uh, to make it fit, considering if I go back to a factory radiator in the future, then I'll have to cut it and make it longer again, but I think ultimately uh, that's going to prevent this problem from reoccurring. Okay, so we cut a little bit out right here. It's tack welded back together, and our inlets and outlets are now lined up and because this is on an angle when I cut it it act, moved it back a little bit too this was you know almost flush up against here by the time you shoved it over and having it back a little bit further lets us use a little bit longer piece of hose and gives us a bit more you know move around room here so as the, the truck flexes and moves around and stuff when you're going around it's going to put less of a strain on this filler neck here so that's what we want now what I'm thinking is you know if I had a bead roller that could do this bead here I would just put this together with a piece of piece of hose but we're gonna weld this up and probably gonna try to make a fairly wide bead on it and then that way if I ever go back to a factory radiator and the inlets where it's supposed to be I can just cut it apart on that wet weld bead and then the remaining weld bead on either side will be what can hold the the hose on there so that's my plan I'm sure some of you guys will agree with it some of you won't but 
it is what it is and that's what I'm gonna do so let's get this thing welded up all right so that's all welded up now just test fit it again here real quick pretty happy with that so we're just go ahead and give it a little and then uh, cut a new radiator hose and put this back together fill it up and pressure test it all right so we got our pressure tester on here and if I can get that to where you can see it we got it pressured up to about 12 psi got our hose on here here's our repair on the radiator I did have a little bit of trouble for some reason getting this hose to seal to the the outlet there or inlet rather so that's why we got two hose clamps on there but that's all sealed up there now nothing's leaking there here's our weld where we welded this these two tubes back together you got no leaks there our radiator hose is now straight in line with our inlet into the radiator anyway guys thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed the video be sure to like comment subscribe down below thank you have a great day